Hey guys, welcome to the first longer video. Since you guys have been asking for it, I figured maybe I could give this a try. We're gonna first do Dominions 5 because it's a really great necromancer game and I figure some of you probably don't realize that yet. So it needs a little demonstration just to show you guys how great of a necromancer game it is. So we'll pick Middle Ages, that's fine. I'm going to make myself the faction of Amor, which is a really great necromancer faction. Add in some random AIs, make some of them difficult. And I'll also add an arch nemesis as a mighty AI. And we'll figure out what faction that's going to be. Let's make it Kalem. They're always a pain in the ass when I play this. So Kalem's the arch enemy. As you can see, there's a little bit of info about Amor here. Basically what Amor is, is they're kind of a dead race of um, Romans, basically. Dead Romans that have died. And you get heaps of dead Roman skeleton units. There's some advantages here, as you can see. They don't recruit regular armies, but they summon or reanimate undead. So what basically happens is, is that instead of having a population base and recruiting units from that, what happens is that population base will die and from the corpses you get new units. Their magic is mostly death with some fire and astral. Their priests are powerful and every priest is capable of reanimating the dead from corpses. They're a pretty neat race. I do enjoy them quite a lot. Now we get to choosing our god. And we've got the standard stationary gods up here, but also this statue of the underworld, which is sort of faction related. And we've got our giant options here. These ones will be um, mobile on the map. We've got the monster ones. Then down at the bottom, you've got your sort of human ones and they're very weak but you get a lot of points to spend with them what i typically like is a stationary um hero because i'm not really out there on the map i usually keep the 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 hero back in the base summoning undead and stuff like that so i guess i'll go for the statue of the underworld he's pretty good anyway it's got a strong dominion, good death magic, nice research. Yeah, I'll go with him. Now the next thing I want to do is, is I want to jack my dominion way up. This will allow me to spread my influence further. We've got maximum death dominion already. Undead aren't affected by temperature really. So to get more points, I'm going to go for an extra cold realm. Because all our dudes are dead, they don't really have to be that productive. So I'm going to go for maximum sloth. And I'm also going to go for maximum chaos in the faction. That will increase the unrest and chance of um, beneficial random events. And because we're getting more random events, I'm going to jack up the luck. So it's going to increase the amount of well, it's going to increase the chance that all these events that we have are lucky events. I'm going to get heaps of death magic. I'm going to add a bless effect. Let's see what we can do here. Fear, what's that? Blessed units become extremely frightening. So for that, I need one more fear level. Uh, death level, rather. Add the bless effect. Perfect. So that means that all of our um, really elite units will have the fear effect. What else can I do here? Maybe some earth magic might be a good idea. Maybe some fire. Hmm. 
I could choose to make the god dormant for more points, that means he's not instantly available in the game. I have to wait a bit. But I think I'll just go with it how it is now. That's pretty good how it is now. So I pretty much spent all the points I can spend. We'll continue on now. Hi, I'm Polis. I'll just go for giant Cheb. That'll do. Giant Cheb. Yes, all praise Giant Cheb. Now I've just got some game settings here. I'm going to turn off the Throne of Ascensions mode and change it to Conquer All. Because I kind of just prefer the, the victory condition to be conquering everyone. I don't like to be cheated out of the victory by these kind of other conditions. They always pissed me off in Civ Five when they'd win with like a friggin' uh, religious victory or whatever. I've still got tanks on the map and they're winning. That's stupid. So now the map's being generated. All right, here we go. Now, oh, here's our little map. We've got our leader here. Or our hero, rather. With spacebar, I can give a command. Let's see how many... We've got 10 death gems right now. To summon an archbishop, we need 23. What's an acolyte do? They're just a basic priest. I'm going to set the leader to just research for now. Bone Crush, he's a mage. I'll turn him into. Actually, no. I'll make this head this guy my prophet. That makes him a bit stronger. This guy can do research in the meantime. For the first turn, I generally don't like to attack anywhere because, as, as you can see, you can't see what's on all these squares yet. So for the meantime, I'll set up my research. I think what we need is... I'd like to go for enchantment. Because then we can do all these various evil spells on the land that will destroy the health and happiness and make more undead and stuff like that. And it also lets me make liches. So I'm going to do that. Going to queue up some enchantment levels. There we go. That means research will be going towards enchantment. And with that, I'll end the turn. All right, now we can see what's on the other tiles. Headless, he's now a prophet. Let's just assign some new troops to him. I'm going to tell him to always stay behind the troops so he doesn't charge in and die. I'm also going to give him a little bodyguard contingent in case an assassin comes and tries to assassinate the leader. Now, as you can see, there's this morale thing. What generally happens is, like with normal armies, is that the more you separate them out, the lower the morale becomes. But for undead, that doesn't matter. Undead don't have morale penalties. Except for the undead leaders. They can still get spooked and retreat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, arrange the armies a little bit. You can choose all kinds of formations like line, box, sparse, double line, stuff like that. I'm just going to keep it in box for now, that's fine. So we've got 46 troops. That should be more than enough to take this province. Going to charge in there. We've now got 20 death gems, but I still need 23 for the archbishop that I want to summon. So I'll just end the turn here. There's a battle, let's check it out. So in Dominions 5, or any Dominions game, 
the result of the battle is predetermined and you kind of just watch what happens and generally I like to speed it up because I find the default speed to be too slow so we've got our dudes, they're throwing their spears and these guys are coming in from behind the first enemy is retreating, that's good oh, yep, we won good stuff so now this province is ours first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the prophet to construct a temple this will continue to expand my dominion and start killing off more and more population making more corpses and getting more undead summoned we've now got 30 death gems so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell giant Cheb here to stop his research for a minute cast a ritual spell and we want I'll actually make a Dusk Elder first. That will, that's a more powerful mage and it will be able to summon more archbishops in the future without us having to interrupt the research of our god. So I'm going to do that first, Dusk Elder. What else can we do in the meantime? More undead have spawned in the meantime. We've got some heavy cavalry more infantry and some basic zombies that's it for now let's end the turn brilliant what's this an unexpected event more unrest and some magic oh, that's fine doesn't matter if the population's unhappy because they're all being killed off anyway Let's get our god back to researching. Grave Shree, he's our dusk elder that we just summoned. We'll put him on research too because we need still another two death gems before we can summon the archbishop. In the meantime, we've managed to construct a temple in this province. So now I'm going to set up just a basic defense in this province. This is like an army that will sit here and defend against attacks. And that way I can keep moving with my other, with my main army here. So I've got 40 units in this province. Yeah, basically all the surrounding provinces have around 40 units. So I'm going to attack the next 40 unit province. And hopefully we'll be victorious there. End the turn. got unexpected event minus defense that's sad our first research and enchantment is completed that's good and there's a battle I'll just speed it up again come on we can win Oh, fuck. That was an almost defeat, but we managed to pull it off. Close indeed. Alright. So, we'll just set up some basic defenses. Then after that, we definitely want to return to the capital and get new troops. As you can see in our other province that we just took, undead have already begun to spawn in. And we've also got two mound kings. Mound kings are basically basic commanders that can spawn in. Tell this guy to stay behind the troops and start assigning troops to him. Give him a bodyguard contingent. But otherwise, I'll just keep assigning troops. Now, these ghouls, they're actually living units. Well, they're sort of half undead, half living. 
their humans have been cursed by hun hunger and they will retreat in battle so they do have a morale but aside from that they're undead pretty much I'll just put these zombies in front and I'll tell these ghouls to attack the rear attack rearmost enemies so while the zombies are just advancing sluggishly forward these guys will try and circle around from behind that's good I'll send this other guy more back to the capital too to get more troops And now we've finally got enough gems to make an archbishop. So I'll interrupt Grave, Grave Shree's research. And I'll say revive archbishop. Now the reason why I want an archbishop is they're able to summon a lot of undead per turn. As you can see, we've got a lot of corpses here. We've got 648 corpses in the capital. We've got 167 in this province and 188 in this other province. These could all be reanimated into undead. So I want to start making these bishops and stuff to start the reanimation so we can get more soldiers. With that, we'll end the turn. We've finally got our archbishop here. As you can see, he's a re got the re reanimator priest ability. And what this does is, is it means the higher his priest level is, the more undead he can summon. So what I'm going to do is there's a lot of corpses in this capital, so I'm going to keep the archbishop here, and I'm going to get him to reanimating. I think what we'll go for is I'll get him working on horsemen. Cavalry is always really good. I'll set Grave Shree back to research. In the next turn we'll have enough gems for a new bishop and that bishop we can send to one of these other provinces and get him reanimating. As for our headless guy, he needs new troops. And there's a lot of troops here in the capital so I'll start adding them in. That's a good strong army now. That's definitely enough to take one of these other provinces out. Now, as you might recall, with my dominion, we were, we took cold. As you can see that as my influence is spreading here, the snow is spreading out across the map. So these areas were previously kind of lush and green, and now they're becoming snowy. If I'd chosen heat instead, they'd, they would have become more desert-like provinces. And so this forest here is very undefended. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and attack that. That's an easy victory. Mort. Mort can chill out here until more undead spawn in the capital. And that's going to happen really fast with the Archbishop reanimating stuff. As for Antima here. I'm just going to continue assigning troops to him. Eventually he'll be, he'll have a strong enough army that he can move out and start taking land as well. All right. Actually, we might be able to send him out as well. What's he got? He's got 58 troops, 40 defenders here, 20 defenders here. We can definitely take out this province. All right. So that's all I want to do for this turn. Except for I'll just take a look at the enchantment. So these are the spells I've unlocked so far. One of them is reanimation, which will basically allow us to convert gems into undead. Not so important because we get so much undead spawning anyway from all the people dying. Most of these are in combat spells. We've got Revive King here, which basically just lets us summon a Mound King. But we get those anyway just because of our faction. So we don't need that either. But I'm more interested in are these other spells. Behemoth. 
Pale Riders is a good one. Let's you turn Death Gems into Horsemen. A lot of Horsemen, you get 20 plus per summon, which is great. Anyway, let's continue on. End the turn. That was a battle. Let's view how it went. Speed it up. You see how these guys went around the back like I told them to? Okay, that was an easy victory. And then we had another battle in the Saran Forest. That was where our um, prophet went. I was wondering what this noise is. That's the prophet buffing the troops. If we right click on him, we go to the prophet, you'll see that he has priest abilities and he's able to buff the troops with spells. I'm not sure how we can see the spell list here. Hmm, not sure we can. In any case, I'll take a look at that later, but he does have buffing spells for the undead. So as you can see, this is a massive stomp. Basically no resistance here. Which is good. So let's go to this province and see if I can figure out what spells this guy's got. If we go to... Hmm, we right click on him. No. Army setup, cast a spell, cast specific spell. Okay, these are the spells he's got. So he's got all these different buffs for our undead. The one you're seeing the most of is this protection of the sepulcher. And it buffs the entire battleground for more magic resistance to the undead, which is important. You'll find that armies that you've got that don't have a priest in them or they don't have a prophet they die much more easier to banishment because other priests are able to banish undead and also to fire magic and stuff like that that makes short work of undead as well so that's fine we don't want to change that guy's orders he's fine as he is We'll just add a little bit of defense to this province so it isn't taken back by bandits. And then we'll continue on to conquer this 30, 30 uh, unit province there. We'll also add some def basic defense to this other province we took. What have we got here? 30 enemy units. I think we can probably take that out with 50 looks. We'll just try it. We've definitely got enough for another Archbishop now, so I'm going to summon him in. Well, we could actually go for two lesser bishops, which might be a good idea. I'm just going to go for a standard bishop. And can you summon a bishop? You can. Good. Or well, not enough gems. We're one short. God. All right. In that case, I'll just wait. Got lots of units spawning in the capital, which is good. We set our um, bishop here to making horses, and these are the horses he's making. Just these basic cavalry. That's pretty much all we can do for this turn. We'll end that. More battles. See how they went. See we are attacking in that forest again. Alright, this will get easy. These Roman troops are pretty damn strong.
one thing about the Roman troops is that they don't have any kind of ranged weaponry, really. The best they've got is a little pilum or whatever that they throw into battle before they move in. Which works pretty well, but archers are definitely something that you need, and you can only summon them in. So these horses are actually pretty strong. We could lose this battle. Yep, we're done. I guess zombies aren't that great. So that was a complete defeat. We lost basically every unit. Except for the Mound King. Oh god, we're losing dominion in this forest. Okay, so this guy... He can take these troops. He needs to go back and get refueled. You, you can make another Archbishop. We got this standard Bishop. We're going to send him to this other province, get him reanimating. We've had more commanders spawn in in the meantime. We can just start assigning troops to this guy. Give him a bodyguard contingent. Uh, what? They can't be guards? Oh, okay, there's too many in this squad. There we go. As for the commander, he can stay behind the troops as always. Put these guys a little bit forward. I'll put them in double line formation. Also, we've got a lot of horses here. What does I put these horses on the side here? Box formation is fine for them. Tell them to attack the rearmost enemies. I'll move this guy down here. As these other two, they can just sit there for the meantime. Don't have enough troops to be assigning yet. I'm actually going to need some money here. Low on money. So I'm just going to go ahead and pillage this province. So it's kind of like destroying my own people basically for more money. It doesn't matter, I mean they're all going to die anyway. And their corpses will sit there ready to be used. Yeah, that's enough for this turn. Five hundred and twenty people dead for fifty two gold, so it's about ten gold per person. That's pretty good. We revived an archbishop and we gained some dominion in a random province. That's good. So now we've got two archbishops, one's reanimating horses. We'll get this other guy also reanimating horses. We can never have too many. As for this guy, I'm going to get him going out now and start searching the provinces for magic. On every province, there's a chance to find magic sites. And magic sites contribute to the amount of death gems you can get. We'll get this bishop here. Reanimating will make soulless, that's fine. Soulless are basically the zombie units. We'll give more troops to this bloke. These zombies are pretty crap units, they can just stay there. This guy. He can pretty handily take out these 20 knights, I think. Our knights are better. Antema here. He needs more troops. He's the bloke that was defeated in that other battle. Give him some zombies. And some more ghouls. 
ghouls, they can attack the rear. Position them here. These guys can go in front. I'll put, actually put them in double line. And these zombies can go way in front as meat shields. We should be able to take out 40, 40 wolf tribes. Blokes should be possible. That's about it for this turn. We'll keep this guy pillaging over here for more money. In the meantime, troops are being spawned. That's good. All right, just end the turn. A few battles here. Yeah, this should be an easy victory. One thing that annoys me is how long it takes the battle to end. It kind of just sits there for a minute. Alright, so these normal knights are no match for our proper knights. Yeah, that was easy. Unexpected event. Oh, more gold. Brilliant. So I'm actually going to tell this bloke to stop his pillaging and to construct a temple. And then I'll add some basic defense here. We need more temples to continue pushing our dominion out. And look, we've found the first enemy here. This flag here represents an enemy faction. Because there's a lot of people in this province. Hmm. We need this guy to search for magic sites. And assign more blokes here. We can, how many troops have we got here? Just a little, 45 troops, it's not really enough to take out these enemies. So in this case, hmm, what can I do? I'll just go back to the capital, get restocked. This guy. So we're going to interrupt the research of our, our god here. Make another dust gilder, because this one's busy searching for magic sites. We've got Mort here. Not really enough troops to get him out in the field yet. But we can begin preparing an army. Get these guys guarding, tell Mort to stay behind. Troops up here. Attack the rearmost as always. Put these guys out in front. Double line formation. Fifty enemies. I'm better off to wait for a bit, I think. Bane wound. Can he do? He's got a fairly large army, 64. We should be able to take this province. That's it for this turn. I'll just view the battle. This should be an easy win. Oh yeah, the knights went straight for the commander and killed him. 
send the troops basically just routed at that point. We've got a random event that gives us more gems. This is why I picked that uh, combination of turmoil and luck. So we get lots of nice events like this that give us good stuff. We'll get the occasional bad event, but mostly it's a positive bonus. Giant Cheb made a new Dust Gilder. So we can get this guy. I'm actually going to make a load of cheaper priests. We'll get some acolytes going. Start churning these guys out and get them preaching and raising undead in all the provinces. We've got a few more uh, commanders here to assign troops to. Stay behind troops. Set to guard commander. Get these idiots out in front. That's basically all we can do there for the meantime. Need more troops. Our Dusk Gelder Grave Tree did find one magic site. The Garden of Frozen Flowers produces one water gem per turn. So that's good. We've got a haunted village in this site, which is nice. A few other magic sites around. I'm going to get this guy just going from province to province, searching for magic sites. Um, can assign more troops to this bloke. Alright, so he's maxed out now. He's got 80 troops. Mort. Let's get him clearing this province. As the minions pushed a new bit of territory there. Before I take on this guy, I'm going to continue killing off these independents. Take out these guys because they're a bit weaker. This guy, he can... He can get just get his ass over here. Plague stink. Just give him some more troops. He's almost maxed. He should definitely be able to take out these independents. If he can't, then he'll have to be executed for incompetence. This guy can be assigned all these troops that are sitting around. So as you can see, there's a lot of troop management in the game. Stay behind. I won't worry about assigning our bodyguards to this guy. Doesn't seem to be any enemies of assassins out and about right now. As for him, we can get him moving down here towards this 30 enemy area here. In the meantime, we've got a new bloke here, Leper Love. He can't do anything right now. So I'll just end the turn. Got a few battles here. Watch them all. This should be an easy win. We're going straight for the commander back here. Yeah, got him easily. See this shit here, this beam of light stuff? That's him, this priest back here, banishing the undead. 
So we could well lose this. Yeah, we've lost. Most shameful. This is why we need a priest in the armies to defend against banishment. Another b battle up here. This should be an easy victory. Yeah. The Roman troops are very strong. I've got final battle down here. I don't remember what's happening here. Oh shit. Seems we're being attacked by wolves. But we defeated that easily. So now what we need is I want to make more and more of these bishops and acolytes and just get them out. So we've got this acolyte here called Hollow. He can go over here. Mort, he did a good job taking that province for us. Just leave those undead there as defenders. We're gonna get Mort over here. Our prophet, he can make a temple. And we'll also assign some defenders to this province. Hmm. And Tama. There's a lot more troops here now. So these guys to attack rear as always. Position them to the side a little bit. Aside from that, just assigning more troops to this guy. And we'll move him out to this province. He can pick up some undead along the way. Bane wound down here. I'll just give him some crap zombies. Unless he's already maxed. He can't take any more battalions. 40 light infantry. Actually, we can finish the job here that that other guy was incapable of doing. This bloke, get him searching for magic sites. What's our research going? Level three. Not anything interesting yet in terms of research. That's about it for now. In this turn. This game is also a lot better when you're playing with people. So we've got a battle in Urd. Should hopefully be a victory. Yeah. Easy. Those knights went straight for the priest and just took him out before he could banish anything. Get this guy attacking this 30 unit province down here. We'll send this bishop bloke over here, get him reanimating. We need more bishops, so I'm going to continue to summon them. We've got a temple in this province now. There's a city up here which I'd like to take. It's going to be filled with people. Which means there's lots of minions. Forty units should be able to take that out with the profit. Got more here. He needs more troops. Hmm. 
We'll get more over here with these two idiots. Give these idiots some troops. You can also shift click to select a whole bunch like that. This idiot, he can let's start banging on this on this enemy here. These stupid Vanier idiots, or whatever they're called. They're always a fawn on my side in every game. This bloke, Antima. Plenty of troops to give to him. Give him some more zombies. So he's good to go. We're going to start positioning him more and more in the direction of the Vania here. Because they're our real enemy here. They're not. These other guys aren't really going to give us any trouble with his independence. Grave Tree, he's finished searching here. He didn't find anything. So we're going to move him on to the next province. Lothar and Vernick. Get these idiots together with some troops. Tell him to stay behind. There we go. Start moving him in the direction of the Vania. Nothing to do back here. We've got Lepolov still. It's not enough troops to sign him an army. So that's basically it. We're going to start orientating our forces to the east here to fight the Vanya. And we've got our prophet moving north to conquer these northern provinces. In the sea, we're starting, we're starting to get a problem with these Atlantean blokes. What I might do is move an army into the sea and take it over. That's a good thing about undead. Is they can enter the sea without any issues. The only problem is that their equipment rusts if you leave them in there too long. Stay behind troops. How many have we got here? 35 against 30. Should be easy enough. Why can't you enter the water? Weird. Maybe it has to be one of these man kings instead. He can enter the water. Okay, so the this guy can't, this guy can. And actually, instead of moving Antama, Antema, whatever, over to the east, we're going to move him into the water as well. And Worm Plague, he can go to the east instead. That's it. One of headless cripple units died during the march. Okay. I don't know why he would have died, but it doesn't matter too much. One minion doesn't really matter. We got a random event that spawned a Dusk Elder for us, which is nice. We also got a new hero, which is pretty good. And there are a lot of battles. The first battle is against the Vanir. So let's see how that went. They're our enemy in the region. They don't have many defenders, so hopefully we win. There is a priest there though, which is worrying. We could lose this one. Zombies are just too crap. Fair enough. We've got a battle in the ocean too, see how that went. So as you can see, Undead work fine in the ocean. They're a little bit slower. So that's good, the victory in the ocean.
these things look pretty strong, I'm going to avoid them. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep pushing in like this. We've got all these idiots here. We've got troops assigned to them. Start pushing them. We'll take this easier to take province down here. This bloke, he needs to start reanimating. We'll get him on long dead warriors. You need to search for magic sites. This bloke's got a pretty big army, he's actually maxed. But this guy is not. Stay behind. These two idiots can try the luck with the Vanier. Should be able to defeat them with that bigger army. We lost a fair few troops in that battle. Let's watch that battle. That was the one against what's that place called? Bay Pond. Bay Pond. Here. Okay, and see why we lost a fair few units. that's was a victory but we did lose some stuff let's check out this new bloke we got putrescat or whatever the hell that is putrescator i don't know he's uh a dust scholar but he's much more powerful than your standard one as you can see he's got much more astral magic and he also looks different if we compare him to a standard dust scholar which doesn't have the staff and has much reduced magic ability. What else has this guy got? He's also got more than double the research of a standard Dusk Elder. I generally find it's best to keep these guys back in the base where they're safe and they can be useful for various magic. What we can do here is we can get him summoning. Actually, we'll get him researching and we'll get the standard one summoning. We still need more and more bishops, so I'm going to continue making those. Our newest acolyte or bishop, whatever this guy is, he just spawned in, the Bishop of Eldergate. I'm going to send him down here. He can start preaching and building stuff. Hollow, he just arrived. Reanimate, long dead. These blokes, they can continue advancing. That guy's searching, that's nice. Um, what else can we do? It's about it for this turn. End this turn. Alright, so we're attacking the Vanir again. Let's see how we go. We've got much better troops this time, so it should work out better. I up sniped the priest so he can't keep desummoning our stuff. Yeah, that was an easy victory this time. That's the thing about the zombies, they really suck. They're good as meat shields and not much else. What have we got here? The sea battle. This should be another easy victory. Yeah. Easy win. A few unexpected events. We lost some population and got some gems. It's always nice. Gained a random item. Some more province income and bay pond won't last long because soon everyone they will be dead. 
we also got a new bishop but we still need more bishops we've got enough gems from the archbishop so we're going to make one of them this guy will put him in the forest over here we've got a lot of money so we can actually start building temples everywhere make a temple here make a temple over here get this guy making a temple if we can afford it no we don't can't we've got another enemy to the south so stuff is starting to get real heavy and heated over here we're going to reposition these units down here to defend we'll spend some money to defend this province get this guy reanimating long dead set up a defense on this tile mort and head heartless they can attack these independents here we'll get our profit reanimating I guess just long dead is fine for now. And that's about all I've got time for this morning. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you did enjoy this and you guys want more, I can just continue this campaign. We've got a lot of land to conquer yet, as you can see. So this will probably last for a good while.